What is up, everybody? So, WISLawJournal.com, which is the Wisconsin Law Journal, I will link it in the description below as well as give them a follow on X. I'll link all their stuff. They have just put out a very interesting article on their website about making a murderer, Stephen Avery, Ken Kratz, and it also involves Kathleen Zellner and Jerry Buting, who was Stephen Avery's original trial attorney when everything was first happening. Now, this is a very interesting article. They got a copy of Ken Kratz's trial diary. Now, at the very end of this article, it states they actually got a copy of the entire trial diary. But today, on Wednesday, March 27th, they, uh, Ken Kratz asked them not to publish any more of it without his permission. I wonder what is in that diary. Now, the handwriting on this is pretty brutal. It's, uh, I'm gonna need to put on the old glasses here to be able to read this. Uh, I'm gonna put it up on the screen for you so you can go have a view for yourself as well as we are gonna go over the document. Now, they only posted two pages so far of the journal. It looks like they got page one and page 52 posted. So let's let's attempt to read part one and then, and then 52 and then we'll go over the article. My family is stressed, just like me. My wife tries to be supportive and keep some sense of normally around here, but it's hard. My son is away at college and calls for updates. I know he worries too, but the distance is good at this point. Although the trial seems to be with, in my experience realm, I am naturally concerned with what lies ahead. We are prepared. We have great forensic, albeit circumstantial evidence, but my anxiety level is still through the roof. Tomorrow, jury selection begins. It's interesting that he says he has uh, forensic but circumstantial evidence. That's interesting. Page 52 is a little bit longer here. Because Buting's argument went so long and the jury appeared tired and didn't look like they could pay attention to me, Mr. Strang's second half of the closing the judge announced he was going to quit for the day and make the jury return the next day to hear Strang's closing and the state's rebuttal. In chambers, I was livid at one point engaging in heated exchange with the judge. I, I wonder if this is the point where, in Jerry Buting's book, he talks about wanting to punch Ken Kratz in the judge's chambers. I did a video on that a while ago. I wonder if this was it. In chambers, I was livid at one point engaging in a heated exchange with the judge, reminding him his promise not to throw the attorneys a lifeline and that if the jury was unable to follow Strang and argument, it was due to Buting's disregard for time and it wasn't the state's fault. Why should the defense be rewarded with another day to give a second closing? Again, info time limits. The judge told me in no uncertain terms that his concern was for the jury, not the attorney, and if they were too tired to hear and they were too tired to hear any more. There was nothing he would do to force the issue. Just another ruling that benefits the defense. That night I wrote my rebuttal. So those are the two pages. I apologize for how that probably came across with a lot of edits and cuts because it took me a minute to figure out some of those words. During an interview with one of Avery's original trial attorneys on Tuesday, yesterday, Jerry Buting slammed Ken Kratz's character and it has a quote here from Jerry Buting. Mr. Kratz is a disgraced former prosecutor who was forced to resign because of sexually inappropriate behavior with women. 
Wisconsin Department of Justice investigated claims of misconduct against him from 15 women. Ooh, that's a lot of women. He ultimately had his license suspended by the Wisconsin Supreme Court, which called his conduct appalling, acutely offensive, and, and exploitive behavior. His self-serving alleged diary, which attempts to portray himself as a professional whose word is gold, is obviously rebutted by the shameful conduct and his license suspension. His negative comments about myself, Jerry Buting, and Dean Strang further demonstrate his unprofessionalism, Jerry Buting state, stated. In the beginning of the diary, Ken Kratz unveils his media strategy. I agreed to make a statement to the media today for the first time since March 2nd. My philosophy is generally not to comment to the media on any an ongoing criminal proceeding. During Kratz's Saturday interview, I gotta see if that interview is out somewhere. I completely missed that if that came out. With the Wisconsin Law Journal, he claimed he wrote the journal as trial commenced and during its duration. However, during an interview, or maybe this is just all of it being put together. However, during an interview with the Wisconsin Law Journal on Tuesday, Chicagoland-based attorney Kathleen Zellner, legal counsel for Stephen Avery, reacted to Ken Kratz's leaked journal raising red flags. Didn't it say he gave them the journal? Why? I don't. It's not necessarily leaked if he handed it over, right? In my 30 plus years as a trial attorney, this is what Kathleen Zellner states, I do not believe I met someone who has written and published a trial diary. Usually, accomplished attorneys let others sing their praises and do not do so themselves. This document was not written C-O-N-T-E-M-P-O-R-A-N-E-O-U-S-L-Y. Not even going to attempt it with the trial, <laughs> Kathleen Zeller said. During a follow-up interview with Ken Kratz, he remains he, he maintains the diary was written during the actual trial. Zellner noted how on page 52 of Ken Kratz's journal in the section, That Night I Wrote My Rebuttal, raised a lot of questions. Throughout the diary, Ken Kratz took cheap shots at Jerry Buting and Dean Strang, Stephen Avery's original counsel. I find the comments on Buting and Strang to be unprofessional at best. Both of them are highly respected members of the State Bar of Wisconsin, Kathleen Zellner said. Zellner also noted the Wisconsin Court of Appeals wants to decide the current appeal without delay. Our motion to stay in remand was denied, Kathleen Zellner said, noting it's good news the RAV4 must be well preserved for future DNA testing. Zellner noted the appellate court does not want to interrupt the current Avery appeal for DNA testing. We will pursue our motion with the circuit court when the appeal is concluded. During an interview with the Wisconsin Law Journal early in March, Kathleen Zellner said guilty individuals do not want DNA testing but innocent ones do. Zellner said her client is requesting a reversal of the orders denying post-conviction relief and grant an evidentiary hearing. Reverse the judgments of the conviction and the orders denying post-conviction relief and remand for a new trial and grant any other relief this court deems appropriate. Conducting an evidentiary hearing on the new evidence of a third party being in possession of Teresa Halbach's vehicle is vitally important to preserve the integrity of the Wisconsin judicial system. Stephen Avery's trial defense was that the forensic evidence used to convict him had been planted. Now a witness has placed the vehicle with all of the forensic evidence in the hands of a third party prior to that evidence being discovered, said Zellner during an interview with the Wisconsin Law Journal on Tuesday. Can anyone seriously contend if a jury had heard testimony from this witness that a, re that a reasonable doubt would not have arisen in the jurors' minds about Stephen Avery's guilt? Zellner and Richards argue in, the argue in the appellate brief that the circuit court improperly attempted to weigh Avery's facts with speculative theories unsupported by the record rather than accepting his facts as true and determining whether they are sufficiently pled to warrant an evidentiary hearing. An evidentiary hearing would prove Stephen Avery with the opportunity to prove his plea claims that he is entitled to a new trial according to court documents. 
Defense counsel further argues the circuit court improperly found that the materiality of Mr. Avery's newly discovered evidence is exclusively contingent upon its satisfaction of the Denny test for admissibility of potential third-party suspect evidence. So that's where it ends. And then the editor's note, the Wisconsin Law Journal has received a copy of Ken Kratz's entire trial diary. On Wednesday, Ken Kratz requested further pages of the diary not be published without his permission. I just want to go back up and make sure it did say that he gave them the diary, provided his trial diary to the Wisconsin Law Journal. So it's not really leaked. He gave it to them, apparently. But what do you think? What do you think? I sure hope they do publish the rest of it. That would be absolutely incredible to read, I'm sure, if I am able to read it, judging by how it's written. But I will definitely try. But what do you think? Let me know. Leave some comments below. I hope you're having a good day, and I will see you again soon.